Hello to everyone watching this video. I want to let you know you are watching the shortcut of this. This means there will be no testing in this video. This video is going to be an intro, background, and then it's going to be the conclusion thoughts. If you want to see all the testing, which I thoroughly recommend, you should watch the extended cut. Hello everybody. Today we're going to be looking at my big fearsome build. This is my huge project I've been working on after the fencer wanted to make a fearsome build. So let's look at what fearsome does first off. Fearsome. It's getting right into it. Uh, make them scatter and flee. Any attack that inflicts at least one point of damage to hit points triggers a morale check for the opponent with a penalty equal to 20% of your resolve. Normally without fearsome, you do morale checks to enemies when you do 15 points of HP damage and there's no penalty relative to your resolve. I want it should be noted that fearsome, the penalty, it caps at 100 resolve. So that's what we're aiming for with this build is a guy with 100 resolve. So, uh... Let's take a look at some notable equipment right here. We have the Dire Wolf Mantle. This is an armor attachment, and what it does is it gives you 15 durability, and for this build, it also reduces the resolve of any opponent engaged in melee by minus 5. Similarly, in the Trinket slot, where like your Nacho Necklace goes or your Falcon, we have the Cursed Crystal, Cursed Crystal Skull. And what the Crystal Skull does is it does the same thing that the, the Dire Wolf Mantle does, and it means the user, and also the user can never have confident morale, which, um, that sucks. We don't like seeing confident, or not having confident morale, but that's fine. Uh, so people are gonna ask, how do you get the Cursed Crystal Skull? What you do is you do deliver cargo contracts, and there's a 5% chance that uh, sometime during your deliver cargo, some your money or men will be like, hey, what's in this fucking basket? And you open the fucking basket or whatever it is, Ancient Undead will pop out, you fight Ancient Undead, and when you win, you uh, you take it, you have to take the skull. There's no penalty for doing so, you just do it normally. You get one per campaign, 5% chance on deliver cargo. It might be worth it, which is what I did, because um, I couldn't be bothered to like just you know, go forever is I found deliver cargo that goes from one town to the next town over, and I just kept reloading saves. Just, like, re like didn't, like, five-second travel time, didn't get it, reload. Five-second travel time, didn't get it, reload. Keep doing that. Got the Crystal Skull, luckily, in about four or five tries. That's totally fine. Just be prepared for an ancient undead fight. Don't bring your archers. Don't bring, you know, like, a spearman or whatever. But anyway, what so what we see here is if you have 100 resolve from Fearsome, and then you have the Crystal Skull and the Direwolf Mantle, enemies are going to have a minus 35 resolve check, or a check with minus 35 resolve uh, when they're engaged in melee with the Fearsome Dude, and that's huge. And if we can do that with, um, like, frequently with multiple attacks, we can get people breaking. What we want to see is we want to see enemies breaking very quickly so we don't have to kill them. Uh, hopefully we could be breaking them before they act you know you we start using adrenaline and then uh you know you hit them and then on their when they act after you they will run away and take opportunity attacks what we want to see in this build is a uh, i want to see super high melee attack i just want this to be noted now you want super high melee attack super high melee defense this build needs to hit things because you need that morale hit and you like you know getting someone wavering doesn't do anything so you want them breaking you want them fleeing so you want to be hitting everything so normally Maybe I wouldn't go for 111 fucking melee attack on a dude, but I did this time, and I think that's totally worth it. So now we're going to be getting into some backgrounds and traits that are useful for this build. All right. All right, everyone. I want to bring up three more points before we get into some backgrounds and traits that we're looking for for this build. I want to bring up uh, the fights that we want to get into first. So the hardest fights in the game, not counting legendary locations, are Orc Warlord camps and uh, Chosen camps with Unholds. Now, since those are the hardest fights in the game, basically, uh, we want a build that is useful in those fights. I'm ignoring undead. You could maybe say some undead are hard, but like necro savants or whatever. But a fearsome build obviously isn't going to do anything to undead because they have infinite morale. So, morale, which is another reason why it has to be good in these the orcs and the chosen because it can't be good against undead. If this build is usable in undead fights, for whatever reason, if you're doing a gladiator's run and you only have 12 dudes, you could still bring the build. That would be perfect. But in a roster of 20 people, you're not going to be bringing the fearsome dude to an undead fight. You're just going to have someone else to bring. So, let's look. What's we want to be good at? Orcs, specifically orc warriors. I think. I don't think there's much of a meta for killing orc young, 
Like that's <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I'm not like, man, I need an I need an orc young killer. If you're good maybe that could become a thing. We'll see that in some of the testing. But it's not like uh Orc Young are the hardest fight in the freaking world here. And we want to look look good at good at killing chosen. Maybe even good if you can break unholds, maybe you could break orc warlords, uh some of those other key targets. We'll see that. Next I want to bring up counter in being counterintuitive. Counterintuitivity? I don't know if that's a word. But the, what I'm talking about here is the damage that this build does. Because Fearsome is a gimmick. Because the, the way you win this game is to kill your enemies. And a Fearsome build doesn't do that. It morale breaks your enemies. So it's a gimmick. Because you're not killing them. You're doing something other than killing. You're still winning. You're winning kind of by a gimmick, which is morale. It's a good gimmick. I'm not, I'm not discounting Fearsome. But I'm saying if you're just doing a ton of damage. Like, yeah, I have Fearsome on i have fearsome on my like max roll great axe okay you're just gonna kill him anyway so the fearsome doesn't proc like oh i have fearsome uh, i fearsomed a, a level one nacho oh sure you kill him in two hits with your duelist anyway so how long did fearsomes uh have an effect for oh zero rounds okay cool no so you actually want this fearsome build to do very little damage because otherwise you would just kill him if by the time you break an enemy with your fearsome build, they're at 20% HP, you should just kill them. You should have just had a real build and killed them. What you want to do is you want to do very little actual damage and break them. Because otherwise, this build is counterintuitive. You would just bring a real damage dealer instead of the fearsome build. And third, I want to bring up the concept of adrenaline. Because what this is, uh, what I thought of first was having high initiative, but we don't have the stats to level high initiative. And a lot of the, the backgrounds we're using don't have high initiative built into them. So what we're doing instead is we're using adrenaline. Because think about it. If you uh, the you pass round one, enemy walks into you. At the end of round one, you walk up, hit them once, adrenaline. Or hit them twice, adrenaline, whatever the hell it is. Then you hit them at the start of round two. They've broken, hopefully. If you already break them, then on round two, they'll run away from you in zone of control. And they'll just die some more. And that's, that's awesome. That is what I want to do. I want to talk about adrenaline. So keep adrenaline in the back of your mind keep doing low amounts of damage in the back of your mind because you actually don't want to do high damage and keep and keep thinking how is this build good against orcs and against chosen right now i want to go into the best backgrounds and the best traits for your fearsome guy when you're looking for him i think the best background is undoubtedly the adventurous noble because let's think about it when you have a fearsome build you need a melee attack to hit them you need melee defense because you're a frontliner you need stamina because you need to, you know, have stamina, you need to, like, hit things consistently. You need uh, HP, so you don't die, and you need resolve, because of Fearsome, you need 100 resolve. And Adventurous Nobles have the best melee defense in the game, or melee attack in the game, bar Swordmasters. They have some of the best melee, uh, well, did I say attack? They have best melee def defense as well, melee attack and melee defense, except for Swordmasters, so that's perfect. Range defense, we don't care. Range attack, we don't care. They have decent enough HP, and if you throw Colossus on the build, they're actually going to be fine for what we need. They have pretty decent stam. You can see they can actually, if they roll high, they have plus 5 of the average stam. But the key point here is they can have up to 60 base resolve. That is what we need, because let's think about this. We need 100 resolve at the end of the game. We're going to take Fortified Mind, because we need... All those stats and we can't afford we can't level the bomb we only get three levels every time we level up so we need uh, fortified mind increases our resolve by 25 percent and with the arena the uh, arena veteran trait you get 10 resolve so what's all right so let's put it like this you need um you need 70 resolve because what 70 will do you need 70 base resolve arena veteran gets you up to 80 and 25 percent of 80 is 20 and then with Fortified Mind, when you have 80 Resolve, that gets you to the 100. And all you need is 100. So you need 70 base Resolve. 70 plus 10 from Arena plus 20 from Fortified Mind gets you to 100. Okay. And Adventurous Nobles can start out with up to 60. If you, and if you get like uh, 60 with like Fearless or Brave, and then you get a little bit extra from a trait, that's amazing. 45 base is still huge. You don't. You might need some Resolve stars there. Maybe you need 70. But if you do, if you get a high roll adventurous noble, that's what you need. So what you want is you want high, you need uh, stars in melee attack, melee defense, maybe some resolve, depending on how high you get, probably stamina, but you need melee attack, you need melee defense. Okay. So adventurous nobles are clearly your best bet. 
Next, I think the best thing is actually Sword Masters. Now, let's put it like this. Sword Masters, um, when we, you have to, I've just said you have to level all of those things. Now, Sword Masters have really high melee attack, so you don't need stars and melee attack anymore. 72 with no stars will get you an average of 92 melee attack at level 11, which is fine. That's what most builds look for already. So you don't need stars and melee attack with a Sword Master. You have really, really terrible HP, and that's not good. You have really, really terrible Stam. That's also not good. But you have you can have really high melee defense. You need if you have a Sword Master, Sword Master is the best. Sword Master arguably might be the best if you have really good melee defense. I would say you need 50 melee defense. Bare like 50. Um and we're not taking gifted on this build, so that's going to be really high. But you can get there with a Sword Master. Um, I, this is a very, very uh, niche build. You need a very perfect brother with perfect equipment. But a, a max roll or a close to a max roll Sword Master with two stars in melee defense can get to 50. 45? 45 is okay. Uh, that's not bad. So, But, you know, Sword Master is great. Um, Sword Masters get decent resolve as well. And uh, what, what Sword Masters get is they get the old trait. You actually might want old here. Because what old will do, we'll go to old right now. Old gives you 10 resolve. You lose uh, you lose a vision, don't care. Lose initiative, don't care. 10 fatigue, we do kind of care about that. Lose 10 hit points, we kind of care about that. But with nimble, and we can maybe get the 60 HP with nimble. And that can be, that's good enough. Because you have 50 melee defense, so you're not going to die. Like nothing's, you're really not going to hit get hit enough to warrant uh, needing more than 60 HP. So it's fine. But this stam, you're going to need, you're going to need to be pumping stam a lot. You're going to need to know what you're doing. But nine, but let's look at this. You can get 10 extra resolve. So we said that we needed 70 resolve. Now we only need 60 resolve because when a sword master gets old, then you get that. You know, you have 60, 10 plus old, plus 10 old, plus 10 arena. You're at 80. Plus 20, fortified mind, 100. So you're actually, you can build in extra stand points because you're not leveling resolve. So that's okay. So we're going to get rid of old right now. But uh, so sword masters, I ended up doing a sword master because I just couldn't find an adventurous noble and I think I'm fine. Let's say you can't get either of these though. Squires are okay. Squires get a uh, decent HP, decent melee attack. Uh, their melee defense is a little lacking. Their stam is fine. Their resolve is okay. It's just kind of, you have to get a really good, really, really good square. Um, oh, and last one, the Cell Swords. These are the weakest of the four. They have, they have really good melee defense and really good melee attack. That's helping them. Their uh, HP is fine. The thing is with the rest of these, since they don't get old, they're eight, you don't have to level HP ever. I think you can just go, even if you min roll with 50 and you just take Colossus to get you to 62.5, 63 HP. That's exactly where my Swordmaster is after Colossus and pumping HP. So that's fine. It gives you more points to put into melee defense, into resolve, into into uh, stamina. Okay, so we're looking at that. Next, let's look at some traits. Brave is obviously fine. That's an extra rule you don't have to put into uh, resolve. Fearless is even better. 10 points into resolve. It means 10 points you don't have to level. I have a fearless sword master. So I only needed 50 resolve because 50 plus 10 fearless plus 10 old plus 10 uh, arena plus 20 fortified mind. It's fine. I I think I put one level into resolve. It's perfectly, perfectly fine. Um, let's look at strong. Strong is plus ten stam. Tough is plus ten HP. These are both fine. Sword masters notably cannot get tough or strong, but the other classes can. So that's what we're looking at. Next, I want to look at. I want to look at the determined. We said before, determined is actually bad. You don't want someone to determined. Well, I guess it's okay if they're determined, but you're not going to benefit from determined. So if you have a really good determined bro, maybe don't make them fear uh, a fear this fearsome build. On the contrary, Insecure is actually usable here. Insecure is usually a bad trait, but here, since the Crystal Skull already makes you not confident, you, this doesn't matter. This is redundant. So it's okay if you find it, you probably won't get an Insecure one of any of these uh, things anyway. I, actually, I think none of them can be Insecure. But it's just worth noting, if you're going to use the Crystal Skull on any build, you can have someone be Insecure. All right, right now I had five builds going into this testing. I made a video about a few weeks ago and I said I wanted to try these different five builds out and here they are. And I've kind of uh, fixed them up as I've done my testing. So first off, we have a War Scythe build, so War Scythe or Sword Lance. The idea behind this build is that when you can AoE three enemies at once, you can do, and then with Berserk, you could do mass cascades of morale failures. This is actually still a frontline build, and uh, I it's it's it was 
an idea. <laughs> um, the issue with this build is that it can only swing once per turn with um, without Berserk, because it's 5 AP to swing with a, a Sword Lance or a War Scythe. We'll keep saying War Scythe, because that's what I call it. Um, notable things about this build is uh, we have reach advantage, which means you maybe don't need to stack as much melee defense because if you can hit if you can hit three people, you can get fifteen melee defense. That's kind of fine. Um, that was about it. This build really, I w I didn't have very high hopes for this build. I'll be honest, but um, we'll s we'll see how it goes in further testing. Next up, we had a dagger build. Dagger build was the uh, the first one I considered putting adrenaline on. And then we have with uh, with Pathfinder, we can see you get three attacks per turn. The idea behind this build was that three attacks per turn means three fearsome checks. F more if you get Berserk, but I ended up dropping Berserk for Underdog uh, because for reasons. And then, so this build, I ended up being very pleasantly surprised by this build. I didn't think very highly of going in, but it ended up being way better than I thought it would be. So next we have the Hammer build. The Hammer build initially had berserk instead of duelist and had a shield what i noticed with the hammer build the hammer the one-handed hammer when it hits it always does at least 10 hp damage now uh, uh if you remember fearsome let's just look at it right here only needs to inflict one point of hp damage and you're doing 10 and normally without fearsome you need to do 15 and i'm pretty sure it stacks i i I'm under the impression that if you do 1 HP damage with Fearsome, and then you do the normal 15 HP damage from, like, a regular hit, then you'll get 2 morale checks. Okay, and if you're already doing 10 with the hammer, and then you add Duelist, odds are you're actually going to do 15. So you're going to get 2 morale breaks per hit, and you swing twice, so you're getting 4. So I think the hammer was really, really effective. I thought it was going to be effective, and it was effective. I did end up dropping the shield though for uh for duelist this would be a more traditional build if i kept shield expert didn't have duelist maybe didn't have adrenaline but we'll see now the two builds i thought were actually going to be the best were the spear wall build and the repost build now the spear wall bot as i call them the idea behind this build was that when you have spear wall you can have a shit ton of attacks per turn because you're spear walling enemies will run into you. orcs will run into you barbarians run into you um, animals run into you, nachos run, run into your spear walls, and you'll hit the ball, and you'll, this is the mass cascades, I said that before, mass cascades of morale failures. Now this build, the issue with this build, what I thought would be that the spear isn't going to do enough damage through the armor, and I found um, that was largely true, but this, this build was, this was okay, this was a very good thought experiment build. With repost, it's a similar idea that when if you have if you're surrounded by six enemies and they all swing at you once or twice you can get up to six or seven morale or 12 morale breaks per turn um your odds are you're not going to get six enemies per uh per round swinging at you but even if you get all you, you get more than two and you're winning the dagger can get three there's war scythe maybe gets three um, but they're on three different enemies, so he breaks none of them. The dagger can maybe break someone if he hits them three times. The hammer can do two, maybe four, depending on how the HP damage works. But the spear roll and the repost can get many, many, many uh, morale breaks. That was my thought process going into this. So, uh, there we can see the five builds, and now we're going to go into some testing. All right, everyone, now we're getting into some conclusion thoughts. I've made this table here ranking all the five builds from worst to best in Orc Warriors and Orc Young, which combines to an Orc total score. Then we have Chosen Reavers. Then I also threw in Goblins and Brigands Nomads, which represent all human enemies. Not going to talk about those scores. They're very there. Must be noted that Brigands were not tested. Those are speculative scores. I tested for Spearwall um, against the the uh, the Nobles, which you saw. But it, that's just, those are just kind of there for my thoughts so you can ask me about him in the comments so for orcs we saw the war scythe was shit and against reavers and chosen it was also shit so the war scythe was very bad i thought it was going to be bad going in it was bad going out <laughs> not surprised now the dagger build i thought would be really really bad turns out it wasn't against orcs i would actually give it second place um but that is because the other three were really bad Sp like and then against Chosen Reavers, I would give it second place again after Repost, because I think the the hammer is probably better for killing, and overall might be better in Chosen Reaver fights. But if we're actually doing Fearsome, 
but the dagger is less counterintuitive, so I'm going to give it second. Which means the dagger, while neither, well, never the star, is an overall solid choice for this build right here. Hammer, we're looking at first place for orcs, easily first place for orcs. Undoubtedly the best. And orcs are really, really uh, good enemies. I think it's, it's the hammer is better at orcs and the riposte is better at barbarians. That's really worth noting. Against Chosen Reavers, I'd give it third because the War Scythe is bad and the Spear Wall was bad. Um, so that just lands in third place. The Spear Wall was okay against orcs, and since it was shit against warriors, it was okay. It was like mediocre to like a below average against warriors. Really good against Orc Young, honestly. Really, really good against Orc Young. Um, so that averages out to that. And then against Chosen Reavers, it was pretty pretty bad um it wasn't like the worst thing ever it was better than the war scythe i think in that sense that you also are just doing crowd control which is fine do not try and spear well against fucking unholds because they can't be knocked back so they'll just run into you and stun you do not do that against unholds <laughs> in repost we see a, a great dichotomy here of fucking horrible 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 against orcs and really good against chosen reavers so now the three things I want to highlight, I want to highlight that Hammer is best against Orcs, Repost is best against Chosen Reavers, and the Dagger is second uh, in both of those categories. So, the there's a couple solutions here. One of them is if you don't have super duper high melee defense and you can't do the Repost build, I would say go Hammer, and then, uh, or go Dagger. I would say go Hammer, just because you're really good against uh, Orcs. Like, you're just so fucking good against orcs, and I think that can, it's okay if you want to just be a damage dealer in barbarian fights. That's fine. Seems kind of lame. I think if you want to go for the pure aesthetic of Fearsome, you would go Dagger. But, um, the second solution is actually, the solution is not to go pure Repost, because it's bad against orcs. The, so the second solution is actually to go Hammer, Repost, Double Mastery, and this guy fulfills a dual role. We'll see that in game just right now. This is what I think the optimal fearsome build is. Now, if you are just watching the normal cut of this video in the extended cut, I went through a lot of testing. I did uh, some rankings here at the end, and you would I think I thoroughly recommend watching that. There's a lot of good information to be gleaned from there, especially with how to play, as uh, with especially in regards to the other builds. But right now, we're talking about the best fearsome build that I think is in the game right now. Not counting the bannerman, I don't think. Uh, there's argument for the Bannerman because he already has Resolve, but for a pure, like, fearsome, like, guy, I think this is the build. Rambling aside, so we've, we've stuck with Student, Recover, Adrenaline, Colossus, Fortified Mind, Underdog, Nimble, and Fearsome, obviously. So the build, the, the, the questionable perks here, um, so we, we want, we want Hammer Mastery and we want Sword Mastery. So we're left with one perk. And the two choices are Duelist or Pathfinder. Now, uh, why would I want Pathfinder? I'd want it for the Stam, and I'd want it so in Snow Fights, in the in the Chosen, I guess in Orc, in, uh, in Forest Fights as well, but Chosen are a lot often in Snow. You can move to Attack, Adrenaline, Round 2, um, Repost, Attack and Repost, and but not a lot of Stam. In orc fights, orcs are often in like tundra or stain or um or grass or whatever the fuck. You don't care there. Um, but duelist gets you that extra damage which you really need for proccing that second fearsome hit. If you can get that on orcs with the hammer, I think that works well. I think fearsome. I think duelist adds more consistency to fearsome. I did some testing. It's it's a feel. I have no hard data, but it's a feel that duelist makes it better, especially with the sword. I think it's a lot better. So I dropped Pathfinder. I dropped Pathfinder, which means you maybe can't attack round one in the snow or the forest, but you can still run up to there. You can still run up. You can still adrenaline, and you can still get that repost. Pathfinder doesn't help you with repost once you stay still, because you're not moving. You're sure as shit not moving when there's six guys around you. Um, you probably can't even move. And with the hammer build, it is a very static build afterwards. Um, because you want to be getting as many attacks, so you don't want to be moving, because if you move, you can't swing twice. So I think this is the optimal build right here. I want to say, for everyone else, we want high melee attack. We want 50 melee defense. I think 80 stam is fine. I'm using a no stam hat. If I had a play dancer hat, 60 minus 1, or maybe 
Um, you could you could run a minus four hat if you get a legendary wolf hat. Um, that works. That's totally fine. I like as much Sam as possible. I think it's okay. Um, you want a cruel falchion. That is our weapon of choice. Is we want a cruel falchion. Actually, uh, let me switch it out. It's a minus. I have a minus fatigue on use one. I would just use that one. Minus fatigue on use. You want to keep that stam up. Crew falchion though, because it has minus two stam. So you can keep one in your back pocket. And it's totally fine. You go into orc fights. You bring out the hammer. Um, this is again is a minus fatigue on use hammer. That's really awesome. Plus damage. Those are good. I don't think you can get less regular fatigue on these hammers. I think they're always minus eight. Um, effectiveness versus armor. We like to see if you get plus ignores armor, maybe you can even drop duelist. If you have really high ignore armor, um, you can maybe drop duelist and then take uh, Pathfinder. That was really good. Sunken library, you get the extra perk point on a bro. Maybe you can take Pathfinder there. Would I do it on this fucking guy? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe even take goddamn berserk. Not sure. Um, but overall, I think this is the optimal fearsome build right here. Thank you for, uh, you know, sticking through this. this is going to be a long video, especially if you watch the extended cut. I had a blast making this. I had a blast knowing that Fearsome is actually good for something, and I would, I'm actually going to use Fearsome now. I haven't used Fearsome before. I haven't felt the need to. I haven't used Adrenaline that much before, but I love that I get to use Adrenaline. I get to use um, Fearsome. I get to use Repost. I get to use One-Handed Hammers. Those are four things I don't use very often, and I love that. So, uh, thank you for listening. I hope you learned something. Make sure to try out this fearsome build on your own and comment below how you would make it better because I'm sure I missed something. Peace.